Hey guys, it's Marta. June is here. The alliums started blooming. Today I'll take you through my borders and we'll talk about alliums. What is the best place to grow them? What to do to have a lot of blooms? Let's go. adventures with allium started 15 years ago. I was a beginner gardener and I remember going to the garden center and searching for plants and I saw a few bulbs and there were pictures and it, they looked like lollipops, like purple perfect lollipops and uh, I've never seen those plants uh, in real life so I decided to buy them and I bought first three bulbs. I planted them in my garden Somehow I planted them with cut mint and this is a combo I absolutely love and I've been uh, practicing it ever since. But now in my garden you'll probably find few hundreds of different types of alliums and today I wanted to show you all of them. We will begin here because here is my favorite allium. It's called Globemaster and this is the allium that started it all 15 years ago. What I love about those bulbs is that they multiply every year and you get more flowers. If you don't dig them out, uh, you will get smaller flowers uh, in other years. But as you can see here, from one bulb, sometimes I have nine flowers, uh, sometimes even more there, I think about uh, several of them. But you can also dig them out in uh, autumn. You can divide them and plant them separately and then you will get bigger flowers, but one flower from one big bulb. So first let's talk about the space that is best suited for alliums. I've planted them in totally different positions and I've learned a few things. They grow best in soil that is well drained. I tried planting them in places that sometimes the water stands uh, in summer and in winter and they rotted. So this is my best advice to you. Plant them somewhere that uh, there is no, no standing water ever then they will be very, very happy. Here we have a soil that is very rich in uh, compost and they love it. Uh, they just grow like crazy. They've been growing here, some of them, they've been growing here for uh, 14 years. Some of them, of course, are younger, but they are all loving it. Lightning conditions. I think they grow best in full sun and here they get uh, around nine hours of sunlight. But of course, I've been planting them in semi-shade too and they thrive as well. So you can plant them in a lot of places in your garden, also the semi-shade. In deep shade, I think they are not that happy, but uh, you can also try. I think the sun and semi-shade are the best way to grow them. So you look at those beautiful purple lollipops and you, you say, I want them in my garden, uh, where can I get them? So most uh, garden centers sell them as bulbs and they sell them in autumn. And this is the moment you have to plant them. Sometimes you can find uh, them in a pot, but that's very rare in my country. Sometimes you can get them. But if now you are looking at them and you feel like I really need them in my garden, put a reminder in your calendar in uh, late August or early September and then uh, buy those bulbs. When you're buying your bulbs, of course you can do that online, but I prefer to do that in person because I can look at the bulbs and I can, when I look at them, I see which ones are the best. And if we're talking bulbs, bigger is always better. That is true to all the bulbs that you buy. Of course, the bigger bulb, you'll get the bigger flower. Then when you look at the bulb, you have to look at the skin of the bulb and it has to be shiny, beautiful. No uh, like uh, spots, moldy spots are the worst you can get. So getting them uh, nice, shiny, very firm, and then you will get beautiful results. When I plant them in autumn, I plant them uh, three times the bulb deep and I just give it a lot of organic matter. Uh, here we have a lot of compost, uh, almost all compost, because this uh, border, uh, we made it higher, so we added a lot of compost, like really, really a lot. 
and I really love these conditions. They grow beautiful. But there is one thing about alliums that I don't love and I can always get a lot of questions. What's happening? My allium leaves are yellowing. Why is that? So when spring comes, the beautiful leaves appear and they look really, really pretty. But then even before the flowers start to bloom, the leaves will start to yellow. Depending on the variety, it will happen sooner or later, but it will happen to your alliums. And that's natural. That's nothing wrong with them. This is just their beauty. This is how they live. So we have to accept it. But the good thing is you can remove those uh, yellowing leaves and it will not harm the plant. It will not uh, make them flower less the next year. So this is what I do when they start blooming and I see all those yellowing leaves. I come with my scissors and I just cut them those leaves away or I interplant them with perennials that will hide those flowers like catmint. This is a perfect example of a perennial that will hide those yellowing leaves and you won't see them. Okay, let's talk plant companions. Uh, here you can see a lot of examples. I absolutely love combining them with uh, catmint. I told you this is the first plant I planted with them and I still love this combo. Then lupins. I think they look beautiful together. Sweet rocket, Asperis matronalis, a perennial that is uh, beautiful white or purple or even lilac flowers and it blooms for a long time. Uh, if you prune it, it will bloom through the year, but with alliums, it gives a beautiful backdrop to those purple flowers, especially the white ones look perfect, but I will show you with white alliums too. It looks really, really nice. Then irises, I think they are one of the best companions. I've planted them by mistake, I think, but I have so many of them. The lilac ones, the blue and white ones, they look perfect together. Another companion that I absolutely love is uh, early flowering clematis. Here I have Mrs. Chomley and it looks so beautiful with those blue flowers. They are just uh, like a backdrop to those alliums, but they complement each other beautifully. Look at this perfect combo and it is not my decision. This is a foxglove that seeded itself and it's a beautiful white foxglove and it looks perfect with those alliums. You will probably ask what happens after the alliums uh, stop flowering. I will just cut them to the ground because the next step in this border is the rose garden. There, there is a lot of roses here. Uh, so the roses will start blooming. Uh, behind we'll have a wall of clematis. It's mainly clematis viticella and also climbing roses. And then we'll get a lot of perennials like salvias, then coneflowers, phlox, uh, and still the sweet rocket. Uh, after the sweet rocket stops blooming, I will cut it back and it will uh, grow again and bloom again. Uh, also, I have some delphiniums somewhere here. I can see that they start, uh, started to form their flowers, but the roses grew so big this year that they are hiding behind them. I hope. I hope they will be seen. A few of my salvia started flowering. The April night salvia that I absolutely love. I just planted it last year and I let me show you how it looks like. So here you can see salvias that I planted last year. Five plants are here and they blew my mind. Uh, this is uh, this salvia is called April night and I think it's my favorite now in the garden. Always the caradonna was my favorite, still love it, but uh, April night is a salvia I want more in my garden because it's so prolific, so healthy, I really need more. So in this border you can see uh, we have euphorbia that it's changing its color, then a lot of salvias, a lot of box and also on the obelisks you can see uh, clematis. They will be flowering later and then we have some roses uh, in the back. I uh, took some of the roses from here and planted a lot of salvias and I think it gives a better uh, color to, to the border. But then we also have some uh, climbing roses and wisteria that just stopped blooming. Okay, let me take you to another border that is also full of alliums, but a different kind. This border has a lot of different alliums, but I started with Allium Purple Sensation. This is an allium that blooms uh, the earliest and now it is almost, uh, there is almost no color. You can all, only see the uh, little tiny green balls that are seeds and the color is gone. 
but the, this is the allium that blooms the earliest in our garden. I wanted to put more of them here, but I got different bulbs. So I also have allium, I think purple rain, it was supposed to be a purple sensation, but it's not. And this uh, previous fall, I planted uh, a mix of allium bulbs called allium festival, and there are different ones. And I really like that the, uh, the height is different. They look different. There is a lot of purple and they are blooming at a different uh, time of the month. So that's really good to be keeping the color in the border because sometimes uh, you really need to think about what blooms and when. So you can always have something uh, in color. So look here, you can see they're all on different stages. This is all of this is uh, allium festival. So there are different types of alliums that I don't know the names of, but I can really enjoy them. The shapes are different, the colors are pretty similar, but they are blooming at a different moment of the month. So they will be, there will, you will have few weeks of flowers. That is great. So here are the alliums. I planted them in the catmint and the catmint that is walker slow should be leaning towards the grass, but it still uh, needs to bloom. This is a great uh, way to show you that sometimes you don't get the things together. Last year, we had uh, everything in a different order. Uh, this year, the alliums are blooming a bit later, the catmint is blooming a bit later, and the roses will bloom sooner than last year. So uh, it really it depends on the year, depends on the temperature, depends on the spring that we had. I think also the, the temperatures, if we get higher temperatures, roses will bloom earlier. The alliums, they bloom pretty similar year after year, but we can get a shift in a week or two. So uh, I hope the catamint next week will fall this way and we'll still, still see the alliums uh, and it will look the way I want it. Also, I'm waiting for my ladies mantle, so Alcamilla mollis, that will bloom with electric green lime flowers. Uh, and it is a great uh, background to the catmint because then the purple and this electric green they go so well together okay now let's go to the front garden i'll show you the white alliums mount everest and mont blanc So for those of you who are not, uh, not fans of color purple, are there any of you that do not like color purple? But white alliums are also a possibility. Uh, here I have Mont Blanc and Mont Everest and they are very, very tall plants. So I planted them with, uh, again, Sweet Rocket, uh, one of my favorite plants. Uh, first, beautiful flowers, then beautiful scent. It's so uh, sweet, full of cinnamon, full of nutmeg. I really love it. The bees love it. All the pollinators love it. And they go very well with the alliums. In the front, I have Branera. Usually the Branera blooms together with the alliums and with the tulips. This year, Branera started blooming a bit earlier than the tulips. So now there are almost uh, no flowers that are blooming with the alliums but still we get a little cloud of blue. But I think the Branera is a perfect companion also for the alliums and it goes so good in a border that is a bit in a shade. It gives you a lot of uh, light uh, lightness. And I, sometimes when you come here and it's a bit darker, it almost seems like it's glowing. Later in the year, this border is filled with hydrangeas. So hydrangeas, Annabelle, hydrangeas, limelight. And I also have a lot of Hakonekloa uh, grass. Let me know in the comments which allium is your favorite. My favorite has always been Globemaster and I think it's, uh, it will never change. Uh, first of all, because we have history together. Our history is the longest, but I still believe that it is the best color, the best shape, the best size of the lollipop. Let me know which one is your favorite. Okay guys, I'm off to work. I need to remove a lot of those yellowing leaves of tulips and alliums. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing and we'll see you in the next one. See you.